we shall cite a few hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in hope that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grants us the tawfiq to implement the or internalize the prophetic character and for us to tread in the footsteps of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Hadith number 294. Just to, we may have uh, narrated this hadith or read this hadith before, but just to, uh, uh, just as a reminder, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Haddathana Muhammad ibn Salamin, Ani ibn Idrisa, Qal, Sami'atu Abi Yuhaddithu an Jaddi, An Abi Hurayrata radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an majma'in, Su'ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ما أكثر ما يدخل الجنة قال تقوى الله وحسن الخلق قال وما أكثر ما يدخل النار قال الأجوثان الفم والفرج نبي كريم صلى الله عليه وسلم سيبوشا غيرا كي سب سي زيادة جنة مكا عجيز داخل كرني مالي What is the thing that will be the greatest cause of people entering Jannah? What is it by virtue of which many shall enter Jannah? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluq, Allah se darna aur achi akhlaq. In those, Jesus say, Allah ta'ala, Jannah me daakhla ta'a firmayega. Ar Rabbi Zulajal, hum sab ko, Ramazan Sharif me taqwa ki dawlat se maala maal firmayega, aur hum sab ko ahna apne akhlaq ko sabane ki tawfiq ta'a firmayega. Phir, poocha, wa ma akfaru ma yudkhilu naar, koon si cheez hai? جو سب سے زیادہ دوزخ میں داخل کرنے والی ہے جس کے ذریعے جس کی وجہ سے بہت سارے لوگ جہنم میں دھکے لیے جائیں گے دھکے لیے جائیں گے نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا الاجوثان الفم والفرج دو خالی جگہیں two empty spaces and he was in reference to the mouth and the private parts we explained before a brief commentary in relation to the diseases of the heart that stem from the mouth. <coughs> Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah in Hawlu Middin mentions or lists 20 diseases of the heart just in relation to the tongue. And he calls them the diseases of the heart. Because whatever sin is manifest on the outward members of the body is because of the root cause which is the, a corrupt heart. Backbiting, slander, excessive talk, unnecessary talking, idle prattle, backbiting, slander, deception, etc., etc., etc. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, this is the very thing that if people don't control this tongue within the mouth, which is an amal to us, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will cast people into the hell fire. The Prophet actually said, لا يُقِي لَهَا بَالَ A person, يُقِي, he says a word, لا يُقِي لَهَا بَالَ And he does not take any consideration to it, he doesn't pay any attention to it. He just backbites someone. خلاص, I do it on a daily basis, a person thinks. But then the Prophet said, he will be thrown down flat on his face in the lowest pits of the hellfire. Oh, come on, Father. Because of that kalima, لا يُقِي لَهَا بَالَ that he did not take into consideration, that he wasn't concerned about. You know, backbiting has become, become the norm. Evils have become normalities. Okay, you need to backbite, you need to slander, you need to lie when you joke, when you are amongst your friends, in order to, to, to deem yourself cool. Okay, but this is not the case. And the other thing which the Messenger of Allah mentions, mentioned was Al-Fawj. The private parts, these are again an amana entrusted to human to mankind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us granted us a halal way in which we can satisfy our calm desires which are embedded within a human being. Rather, if you have pure intentions, even that act will become a sadaqah, as in one hadith of the Prophet. So as long as it is legitimized and legalized by the Sharia. But unfortunately, with the ever-increasing diseases and corruption in society, one of the greatest evils prevalent in our society, if it's not adultery, then it is the preliminary stages of adultery, which is looking at haram, 
flirting, having illicit relationships outside of wedlock. Okay, this is has this has become the norm. Something that ten years before, fifteen years before, was deemed as derogatory, immoral, wicked by society. Unfortunately, it's now become the norm. People say, yeah, it's it's cool to have to do this and to do that. Bismillah protect us from all of this. Now, the subsequent hadith to this mentions to us, or gives the Prophet Sallallahu prescribes to us a beautiful remedy for us to understand or for us to uh, have a criterion of what is good and what is bad. If you have a sound heart, then there are certain signs that will be manifest, that you will feel, that you will sense when you are doing something right or when you are doing something wrong. Listen to this hadith. حدثنا إبراهيم بن المنذر قال حدثنا معد عن معاوية عن عبد الرحمن بن جبير عن أبيه عن نواس بن سمعان الأنصاري رضي الله تعالى عنه وعن المجمعين أنه سأل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن البر والإثم Sayyidina Nawas ibn Sama'an radiallahu ta'ala anhu inquired from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to what is good and what is evil, what is moral and what is immoral. How do I, what is the parameter or the yardstick with which I can judge what is good and what is bad? How do I know? So look at the beautiful statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Yibru husnul khuluq. Piety, goodness, Righteousness is good character. Summarize all of good into what? Good character. وَالْإِثْمُ مَا حَكَّ فِي نَفْسِكْ وَكَرِهْتَ يَطَّلِ عَلَيْهِ النَّاسِ اور گناہ وہ جو تیرے دل میں کھٹکے اور تجھے یہ ناغوار ہوں کہ لوگوں کو میرے اس عمل کا پتہ چل جائے گناہ کی تعریف گناہ کی علامت یہ Okay, it causes hesitation when someone commits a sin and he his heart is alive. Okay, this is the condition. If the the flame of iman which was kindled through your dhikr of Allah, through your recitation of the Quran in Ramadan, is blown out through sin, then you won't feel this. But for a person with a sound heart, with a sound mind, with a sound ruh, inshallah Azza he will feel this. The Prophet Sallallahu said. A sin is something that causes hesitation and agitation when you do it. You feel uneasy. You feel anxious. And this should be the very deterrent for you committing sin. For you thinking twice before you do it. Because din me karak mehsus ho. Din me jijak mehsus ho. Din me bechaini ho jaye. اسے نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ایک روایت میں ہے استفت قلق و ان افتاق المفتور اگر شئے اور لوگ تمہیں جواب دے لیکن اپنے دل سے بھی پوچھو یہ دل سے مراد کیا ہے امام شعران رحمت اللہ فرماتے ہیں یہ اس دل یہاں مراد وہ دل ہے کہ جو دل پاک و صاف ہو کیونکہ جب گناہ کرے گا کوئی شخص ہے گناہ کا سوچے گا تو اس کے دل میں کھٹک محسوس ہوگی اس کے دل میں جزت محسوس ہوگی وہ بے چینی محسوس کرے گا اور دوسری طرح یہ بیان فرمائی اور تجھے یہ ناگوار ہو کہ اور لوگوں کو میرے اس عمل کا پتا چلے when you are of when you doing an action or you are thinking of doing an action and you do not want other people to know about it you do not want to disclose your action to other people there's something fishy going on there's something wrong pray namaz you pray in the masjid pray outside alhamdulillah نافیش مشکلہ نافیش مشکلہ there's no problem as for doing things which are wrong in isolation you do it but obviously there is this guilty feeling that we should all have that if people were to know what would they think you would be hesitant to do this very safe action which you're doing in your closed doors thinking that there is no watching over you you won't do it outside so this Notion in itself is the very fact that what you are doing is wrong. And remember, taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the essence of taqwa means wiqaya, protection, it's a shield. What it means is, whether you're at home, 
whether I am with my mobile phone on my own, with the iPhone, isolated, on the laptop, at a workplace, away from Bolton, away from my parents, away from my friends, away from people who know me, who have acquaintance with me. It doesn't matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching over you. This is the essence of taqwa. God consciousness. Feeling, the, the, the con having the conscious belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching over you. We believe it. We always say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is the all-seeing, the all-knowing, the all-hearing. al Ali. His knowledge encompasses everything. But do we really mean it? So why are then people isolating themselves away from people, away from their friends, away from their families and committing sins? When they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still watching over them, that very moment in time when people look at haram, listen to that which is haram, speak about that which is haram, eating, drinking, taking in that which is haram, consuming that which is haram. Allah is watching over them in that very moment of time. So this is what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned. So we come on to another chapter here. Babu al-Bukhli, the chapter on miseriness. Kanjusi ke baare mein, Bukhl ke baare mein bayan. Hadith number 296. Hadithana Abdullah ibn Abil Aswadi qal, Hadithana Humayd ibn al-Aswadi an al-Hajjaj al-Sawafi qal, Hadithani Abu Zubayri qal, Hadithana Jabirun رضي الله تعالى عنه وعن أجمعين قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من سيدكم يا بني السلمة ويا بني سلمة قلنا جد بن قيس أو جد بن قيس على أن نبخله رسول الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم نفر ما يعرف قبيلة إسكنانتها بني سلمة وعابك بس آيات وعاب صلى الله عليه وسلم أمس بوجا कि तुम्हार सरदार कौन है कबीले का सरदार कौन है हु इज द लीडर ऑफ योर ट्राइब हु इज द चीफ सो वी सेड जुद इब्न खैस और जद इब्न खैस दे मेंशन दिस पर्टिकुलर पर्सन बट देन दे सेड लेकिन ये बात जरूर इतनी बात जरूर है कि हम उन्हें बुखल की तरफ मंसूब कर देंगे वो कंजूस है थोड़े से He is our leader, but what we, but what we do see from him, manifest from him, is that he is miserly. He doesn't spend it generously. Though he is a leader, though he is the chief of the tribe, he doesn't expend from his wealth. So the Messenger of Allah Yusuf said, Subhanallah. Wa ayyu da'in adwa min al-bukhl. Can you see se barkar ke aur kaun si bimari ho sakti hai? Can there be any malady, disease worse than miseriness? So then the Prophet changed the lead and said, Bal Sayyidukum Amr ibn al-Jamuh Balki ab tumhari sardar Kaun hai? Amr ibn al-Jamuh ka naam liya Woh nahi hai Kyunki unme kanjusi hai Yeh hai Amr ibn al-Jamuh Or phir farmate rawi Wa kana Amru ala asnanihim fi al-jahiliyya Zamane jahiliyat ne ये आमर इब्न जमुह जो थे वो बुतों की देखभाल किया करते थे ही यूज टू लुक आफ्टर दी आइडल्स ही वाज द कस्टोडियन ऑफ व्हाट बी कॉल्ड इन चार्ज ऑफ दी आइडल्स बट इन व्हेन ही एम्ब्रेस इस्लाम व कैन यू लिम अल रसूलिल्लाह और यू लिम अल रसूलिल्लाह सो अस इधर तजवज जब इन्होंने इस्लाम कबूल किया तो रसूलुल्लाह सो अस की तरफ से वलीमा किया करते थे जब आप निकाह फरमाते थे तो सारा खर्चा जो है खाना बनाना वगैरह ये सब इनके जिम्मे था सुभान अल्लाह यानी सखी थे Sahabat ya Latifah. This was an element of his generosity. So the Prophet also appointed him as their leader. The leaders should be those who are generous. Those who do not withhold wealth. Those who spend uh, in the way of Allah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we need to remember at this point here is this. La israf fil khayr. This usul. La israf fil khayr. Wa la khayr fil israf. There is no good in wasting, in squandering wealth. Israf karne mein koi bhalai nahi hai. Aur bhalai nahi koi israf nahi. Jitni bhalai karo, karo, alhamdulillah. La khaira fil israf, wa la israf fil khair. There is no good in squandering wealth, in wasting wealth, as people do in weddings, etc, etc, etc. It's an example I give to you. 
But in terms of righteousness, when you're doing something good, there is no israf in that, i.e. exceed in doing good. Spend as much as you can in the way of Allah, because that will not be classed as israf, that will be classed as infaq fi sabirillah. Spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reward of which you should receive. But only in this world, you should receive multiple number of rewards in the Akhirah. This reward multiplied many times, many fold in the Akhirah. Subhanallah. حدثنا محمد بن سلام قال حدثنا هشيم بن عبد الملك بن عمير قال حدثنا والراد كاتب المخيرة قال كتب معاوية إلى المخيرة بن شعبة أن أكتب إلي بشيء سمعته من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد الراد رضي الله تعالى عنه جوهز المخيرة بن شعبة رضي الله تعالى عنه كاتب ته لكم يبارته he was a scribe of سيدنا مخيرة بن شعبة رضي الله تعالى he reports کہ سیدہ ابی معاویہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ نے ان کے یعنی ان کے پاس حضر مغیرہ بن شعبہ رضی اللہ ان کے پاس ایک خط بھیجا اور خط میں یہ لکھا کہ ایسی کوئی ایسی چیز لکھ کر بھیجو جو تم نے رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سے سنو یعنی ایک حدیث شریف لکھ کے واپس مجھے بھیجو جو تم نے بن مشافہ نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سے وہ حدیث شریف سنی ہو write a hadith Sayyid Abi Mu'awiyah رضي الله تعالى عنه وأرضى ابن أبي سفيان رضي الله تعالى عنه وأرضى he wrote a letter to Sayyidina Mughira bin Shu'ma رضي الله تعالى عنه instructing him please could you scribe write a letter a hadith of the Master of Allah in reply to this letter a hadith which you had directly transmitted from the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم فكتب إليه المغيرة إلا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان ينهى عن قيل وقال this this these are the اصول that we need to you know follow in our life نهى رسول الله كان ينهى صلى الله عليه وسلم عن قيل وقال وإضاعة المال وكثرة السؤال وعن منع وهات وعقوق الأمهات وعن وأد البنات شيء اصول يا سات اصول بيان كيف جواب يعني كان يهدي شيء لكي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قيل قال سے مال کے ضائع کرنے سے زیادہ سوال کرنے سے منع کرنے سے اور دینے کا انکار کرنے سے اور ماں کی نافرمانی کرنے سے اور بیٹیوں کو زندہ درگور زندہ دفن کرنے سے منع فرما دیتے پوری جو ہے زندگی کا دستور اور تمام اخلاق اس میں آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم جمع فرما دیئے Hazrat Mukhir Abu Shaba quotes the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he says that Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade people from gossip, gossip. And he, Imam Al Ghazali rahimahullah actually mentions, um, Subhanallah, if only we were to do this, um, Awliya of Allah subhanahu wa taala's creed says is that every single word that they used to come out of their mouths, they used to write it, they used to write it down. Every single word that used to come out from their mouth. They used to write it down. And at the end, they used to do muhasaba. They used to put themselves to account. Why did I say this? Why did I say this? Obviously, when you have this mindset that you are going to write everything down, you will be very cautious of what you say and how much you say. Whereas the Quran actually says, مَا يَلْفِضُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ there is no word that you utter saying there is Raqib and Atid. According to one narration, this is the name of the angels that are appointed to scribe. Kiram and Katiri. Only that they write every single word that you utter, everything is written. مَا يَلْفِضُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ And hours are spent. Today we say, time nahi hai wale paas deen ka ilm hasil karni ke liye. دین کی مدد کرنے کے لئے مسجد بنانے کے لئے مدرسے بنانے کے لئے غرماء کی خدمت کے لئے وغیرہ وغیرہ کیونکہ ہمارا سارا دائم is wasted and this this is the greatest tool that has facilitated gossip and nonsense واللہ people don't use it properly this is is going to be detrimental wasting invaluable time that you will never get again time is like a fast, ferocious, flowing river. Once you touch one side of it, or a part of it, it's gone. There's no return. It's a one way. 
Being Qal, he said this and he said that and this, this has happened, that's happened. Nothing to do with religion, nothing to do with worldly benefit or in terms of religious benefit. Nothing. Gossip. It's become the norm. In weddings you go and there's people oh, gossip. Masajid people gossip. Can't keep their mouth shut. And for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just understand that very moment in the hereafter when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you that book, Iqra kitaba kafa bi nafsika al-yawma alayka hasiba. Read your book of deeds. Read it. You yourself read it. Read it aloud. You, enough is, you are enough and adequate as a judge for against yourself or for yourself. People just can't, you know, I have seen awliya kiram, ulama, mashayikh, and when we start a conversation with them about how they are and etc., they reply in simple one or two words, and khalas, that is it. I've still got, you know, clear, vivid memory of an encounter which I had with such a great Ali in India. Because when people keep their mouth shut, Allah opens the door to the unseen realm from their hearts. So you need to shut this in order to open the doors to the unseen realm. And there are people who you stumble upon, or oh, not stumble upon literally, but then you, you encounter, you bump into, and you just think, if only I, I could have, uh, you know, steered clear of that person. Waste your time. 15, 20 minutes standing and gossiping, nonsense. Okay, so qil wa qal. This is this isn't, isn't the uh, you know the beauty of one's Islam. In husn Islam, ma'ifarkul ma la yani. From the beauty of one's Islam is to discard everything, is to leave everything which is of not no concern to him. This obviously, there's many things that you receive, but which is of no concern to you. But we are wasting our time behind that. We could have. You know, spend this invaluable time in this blessed month of Ramadan. Every single minute should be cherished. Every moment of it is blessed. In reciting the Quran, in returning to Allah subhanahu wa through repentance, in shedding tears of remorse, in reading, enhancing our sacred knowledge, but our time is wasting on this social media. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from uh, such uh, wastage of our time. Or Nabi Karim Salasim Ida'atil Man. The Messenger Salasim also forbade us from Ida'atil Man, squandering money, wasting money. Today we do an appeal for the publication of religious books, for the establishment of a religious institute, for the sponsorship of an alim, etc., etc., etc. And people are giving. See, obviously, we don't judge people. Five pounds, ten pounds, etc., etc., etc. Whereas what should have been the case is, here's a thousand pounds, here's a five hundred pounds. Here's, I sponsor the uh, student for the entire uh, curriculum, for the entire year that he spends in education. For all of his academic year. Because obviously we, we try to spend money where we can show off to other people. A prime example I gave you over and over and over again, weddings. Weddings. There can be minimal expenditure in the weddings, so as long if we, if we were to be sane-minded, if we had the objective in life, that we want to save this amount of money and then spend the excess in the deen. Okay? For the, for the barak and the blessings to be received by the newly wed couples. So that when we, with that money that we have saved from that wedding, we could have spent it in this, but no, we are going to spend it in, you know, digging a well, in building a madrasa in sponsoring a student of the sacred knowledge, in publishing a kitab of the deen. All of that reward will go to the people who published it, will go to the, the barakah of that will be received by the newlywed couples. They will be barakah in their life. But how can we be barakah in life, in the new marital life, where it actually is initiated with haram, listening to music, squandering of wealth, immodesty, music, etc., etc., and so forth. So, we need to get our priorities, priorities right, okay? Prioritize in religious affairs, in religious matters. Matters of religion come at the top. Then the other things will fall into place. The Messenger of Allah said, whoever keeps his objective, main motive and objective and aim in life, 
to please Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather all of his scattered affairs, all of that which is running there, running here, running here, for a bit of money, for a bit of livelihood, Allah will gather all of that together, make everything easy for him. But if someone's objective in life is dunya to show off, pretense, riya, then Allah will scatter, disperse all of his affairs. That he is trying to accomplish this task and he's got this task to do. So he's running from one place to the other. And he can't finish these tasks. And then the Prophet also said, or what he mentions from the Messenger in relation to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kathrat is Su'ad. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Zyada sawal karne se mana farmaya. Baaz ulku ki bhoat buri aadat hoti hai. Yani, aise sawal karte hai jis mein na deen ka fayda ho na dunya ka fayda ho. Or sawal karte jate rehte hai. Ye ho gaya to kya ho gaya, wo ho gaya. Hypothetical questions. Actually, pathetical questions. Okay. Asking too many questions. The Messenger of Allah said, do not ask too many unnecessary questions because what have destroyed the people before you was their asking, questioning, objecting to the laws that were revealed upon their prophets. Prophets, Ali Musa Don't ask too many questions. People will make manifest that they are muttaqi and what is God and they ask these questions to kind of show up. Obviously there is an uh, element of hypocrisy in that. So obviously a person asking the question should be at most sincere. Okay. So Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Beja sawala karne se bala farmaya. Beja sawala. Jis se na koi deeni faida ho, na koi dunya bhi faida ho. Haznu Ali San Kashni kitni lambi thi, Hazmu Sahih Zim Kasa kitna lamba tha, kaha pe hai wo aaj? You know, when you ask about these things, you know, they are. Ah, ye poochho, meri, meri, meri yaman kiya namaz kanda kya meri namaz durust hui ke nahi hui, meri namaz mukamal hui ke nahi hui, ghalti se mich diye kaam ho gaya to iski toba kis tarah hai? Yeah, these are the relevant questions. So bringing relevance to our questions is one of the things which the Messiah requires from all of us. And then, Man'in wahad. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Mana karne se aur dousro se maal wusul karne se bhi mana farma. Yani, aapke baas agar koi cheez hai, aapke zhurut abhi uski hai nahi. Aap uski zhurut hai nahi. Koi maal nahi aapke baas hai, to aap unko de de. As Allah mentions, Wa ibn Aul ibn Allah mentions the sifah of those who will be perished. They, you know, withhold even the smallest of favors. They can't do even the smallest of favors. Please, can you take me from place A to place B? No, I'm not got time. I can't give you this. Etc. Etc. And wahat, give me this. You've got, you've already got things at home, but then you say, give me this. Give me this. I'm asking what. So again, the Prophet forbade people from doing this. وَعُقُوقِ الْأُمَّهَادِ The Master Sallallahu also specifically, generally obviously, عُقُوقُ الْوَالِدَيْنِ forbade people from عُقُوق الْوَالِدِ disobedience to parents, and especially this hadith, disobedience to one's mother. Disobedience to one's mother brings on calamities not only in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swiftly punishes that per person in this dunya even before the akhirah. Uqukul walidain, yani maabab ki nafarmani ek aisa guna hai. Nafarmani simulat yeh, ki aisi nafarmani ki jis mein shariyat ka takra na ho. Wanna agar ho shariyat ke khilaf hukam dete hai, unki nafarmani ki jai ki, yuki la ta'ata lil, la ta'ata fi ma'asif al-khalid, لَا طَاعَةَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ فِي مَعَصِيْتِ الْخَالِقِ There is no obedience to the creation of Allah in the disobedience of the Creator. So who rules above is Allah. The, the rule above is Allah's. Okay? No one is above the divine law. Everyone is below the divine law. So if what they are commanding you to do is in conformity with the Sharia, then Disobeying them will be regarded as ruquq and the Prophet forbade people from ruquq al-ummahat. 
to the extent in one hadith the Prophet has meant, in the, the narrators have mentioned, is Sahabi someone who was in the close the company of the Messenger of because of عقوق الأمهات, because of disrespect and disobedience to his parents, he could not even utter the kalima in, at the brink of his death. In the agonies of death, sakaratul maut, and the last moments of his life, he could not even utter the kalima, the tasmeen of faith, even though the Prophet was instructing to him the talqeen. But as soon as his mother forgave him, he was able to read the kalima and he passed away. And he left his mundane world, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. وعن وعد البنات and in respect of what used to happen in the, in the Jahiliya period and even today in the form of a, a new form of uh, burying which is abortion which is to bury daughters alive the Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said بيتيو كو زندا دفن كرنه سي بنا فرمايا and Allah describes the people in the Jahiliya وإذا بشر أحد بالأنثى ظل وجهه مسودا وهو كظيم يتوارى من القوم من سوء ما بشر به أيمسكه على هود أم يدسه في التراب ألا ساء ما يحكمون Whenever someone was congratulated بشرة This is a بشارة from Allah you have, Allah subhanahu has granted you a daughter Your family has given birth Your wife has given birth to your beautiful daughter he would spend the entire morning looking down in remorse, in regret, out of shame. His, his face would turn black. Shall I keep this gift from Allah or shall I bury it in the, underneath the rubble? How evil, it, how evil it is what they judge. Daughters are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the very beginning, of Al-Adab Al-Mufrad, we mentioned many ahadith which the Messiah Allah Sallam mentions the merits and the excellences of uh, those families in which there are daughters who are treated equally, uh, who are nurtured in the Islamic environment. The Prophet Sallam said in one hadith, uh, anyone who rears two daughters to the extent or to the age of maturity or until they are married, off, then I and he shall be like this in Jannah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to act upon these uh, injunctions of sharia and to stay away from these manhiyyat. Final hadith, Haddathana Hisham ibn, Haddathana Hisham ibn Abdul Malik, he said, Sami'atu ibn Uyaynata, he said, Sami'atu ibn al-Munkadidi, Sami'atu Jabirin, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa al-Mujma'in, ma su'ila al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, shayin qattu faqala la. This is a similar narration that we've mentioned before. حضرت سیدنا ابن منکری رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ بیان فرماتے ہیں کہ میں نے سیدنا جابی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ کو یہ فرماتے ہوئے سنا کہ نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سے کسی چیز کا بھی سوال کیا گیا تو آپ نے نہ نہیں فرمایا نہیں نہیں فرمایا اور نہ کہنا نہیں عادت رسول اللہ whenever someone asked the messenger for anything صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم he never said no if he had the thing with him then he would give it immediately if he didn't, he would take a qawd upon himself, incur the debt, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then give that thing to that person. At one time, we mentioned the hadith last week, the Messiah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was stood on the musalla. The sahaba were in a way to perform salah. And the Arabi came, a Bedouin came. Because obviously they, they're not familiar with the etiquette, so they came. And obviously with the sahabi, we can't even speak like that. Because he's greater, even if he's an Arabi, he's greater than than the greatest of the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, he grabbed hold of the messengers and cloak and said, Ya Rasulullah from my knees only this much is left unfulfilled. In only this much. I only need this much inshallah, Ya Rasulullah You gave me before, but all, I just remembered, yeah, I need a bit more. <laughs> Why is the Prophet what stood? On the prayer mat. And he's about to say Allah. So the Prophet left the musalla. He smiled and he left the musalla. He never rebuked him, he never scolded him. Yeah. And then until his, uh, his need was not fulfilled, he did not return back to the Musalla. As soon as his need was fulfilled, only then did the Prophet return back to the Musalla and lead the people in prayer. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he never, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, said, never said no to anyone. Even today, if someone goes to Al Madin Mullah, mashallah, we have brothers, four or five brothers, may Allah bless all of them in this blessed journey. 
for going to those blessed lands we pray for all of us and especially before the masses of Allah so they're going to you know uh, plead to the masses for shafa'ah for, uh, for all of us on behalf of all of us inshallah and for the fulfillment of our needs in terms of dunya we needs and ukhra we needs inshallah whenever someone goes to the Prophet Sallallahu even today with sincerity and ikhlas whatever he asks for or even whatever he ha- whatever thought he has in his heart the Prophet Sallallahu will you know, grant acceptance to his wishes, fulfill all of his needs, even without him uttering it verbally, verbally saying it. Because the Prophet knows what is in people's hearts. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Ta'ala Hum Sabko Haraman Sharif and Ki Adab Ki Saad Ziyad Ki Tawfiq Ala Farmai or Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ki Shafat Sa Hum Sabko Behraman Farmai or Hum Sabko Nabi Rafla Ka Pairo Ka Farmai. Allah Hum Salli Ala Sayyidina Wa Ala Muhammad Ma Ala Jude Wa Al Karami Wa Ali Wa Sahbi Wa Bari Wa Sallim اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي العذاب النار اللهم ربنا أفرج علينا صدرا وتوفنا مسلمين اللهم رب زدني علما ونقيم الصالحين اللهم اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يقشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يسمع اللهم رب زدني علما ونقيم الصالحين يا الله الرحمن الرحيم جمع الأحباب حرمان شريف في زاد كل تشيب لجاره أمرا وزاد رسول الله صلى الله عليه سے مشرف ہونے جا رہی عالم کے سفر کو کامیاب فرما تمام رکاوٹوں کو پریشانیوں کو مشکلات کو حل فرما دور فرما یا اللہ خیر عافیت کے ساتھ کو ان کو لے جا اور خیر عافیت کے ساتھ کو واپس لے آ یا عالم کی ایمان میں عمل میں عمر میں اضافہ فرما برکت نہ فرما یا اللہ رمضان شریف کی برکات سے ہم سب کو مال معاف فرما ہم سب کے تمام صغائر کبائر گناہوں کو معاف فرما ہم سب کی توبہ کرتے ہیں یا اللہ ہم سب کی سچی توبہ کو قبول فرما ہم سب کی توبہ کو قبول فرما ہمیں توبہ نسوح کی توفیق عطا فرما خاتم بالخیر کی توفیق عطا فرما اللہ و ربنا تقبل منا انکا انت السمیع العلیم و تب علینا انکا انت التواب الرحیم ان اللہ ملاکتا مسلون علی النبی یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا صلو علیہ وسلم و تسلیما صلو اللہ علی النبی ربی و علی صلو اللہ علیہ وسلم 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 صلو اللہ علیہ وس